people. Welcome, everyone, to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist. And on today's show, Managing Income Property, part three of our series on real estate investing with best-selling author, real estate economist, and host of The Real Wealth Show, Kathy Fetke. Kathy, welcome again. We're talking about real estate investing. Now, uh, I have to say, in the traditional broker-dealer market and so forth, we sell REITs. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we package everything, yes. we're doing it, and it's generally not, there's some income play here, yeah. there's some, but it's not the appreciation, you kind of have to wait a little while, and yeah. it's usually commercial property. We've been talking, the last two segments, we've been talking about, hey, we're buying residential, right? <laughs> I mean, that's your topic. You're talking about the big hedge funds are buying residential. Yeah. I mean, that, that kind of puts me on the same level. I don't know if I can compete with that if I'm going to be the individual <laughs> against a hedge fund, right? But I want to talk about the big thing that I think about when I think about it is this, Property management. Yeah. I'm just so sorry. I mean, the first yeah. thing I think about is, do you want to be a landlord? No. 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 I don't want to be dealing with maintenance. I don't want to be dealing with the person yeah. didn't pay. How do I get through? I want to own. I love your idea. I think, let's say I'm buying all into it until I got to this point. Yeah. Oh, do I have to be a landlord? <laughs> Well, there's a whole lot of different ways to do it. I, I have, uh, as part of our membership at, at Real Wealth Network, we have producers and actors. They don't have time to manage anything, mm -hmm. and they don't want to. They want totally passive. So it really depends on how active you want to be. Some people love having a property next door and tinkering with it and fixing things. I have the feeling you don't, I don't. I don't I'm know how there. to fix things. <laughs> I wouldn't even want anyone to, to live any, anything I tried right. to fix. So back when I started, property management was terrible. Let's be honest, that was the worst part. You could buy the best property, but uh, if you had the, the wrong management in place, it would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But because hedge funds came in around 2010 when, when property was so cheap and single family homes were you know a dime a dozen for 20 cents on the mm -hmm. dollar, uh, they came in and bought thousands of properties and they realized that property management is terrible and mm -hmm. no fun, but they systematized it. And since then, I mean, literally in the last few years, it's become institutionalized. It's a totally different industry. It's an asset class. It's, it's completely changed. So the bottom line is you don't have to be, you hire mm -hmm. that out. When you treat real estate like a business, and in a business, you you don't you're not the janitor. You're not mm -hmm. cleaning your toilets. So you you have someone else do that for you. Mm -hmm. And and it used to be a mom and pop thing where you just find a local realtor and they would manage your property and they'd either do a good job or they wouldn't. It's not like that anymore. You have mm -hmm. professional management companies that will do it all for you to keep it very passive. Now, are they doing it as a price as a as a kind of a one shot deal, or do you a percentage of rent, or what? What's the price tag for the management? It's usually around eight to ten percent, and what of? of of I'm sorry, of collected rents. Of, of collected well, rents. Well, they're all different, but I wouldn't ever accept a deal or an, uh, any. I wouldn't sign an agreement that says a flat rate, whether it's rented mm -hmm. or not. That doesn't give them any incentive to rent it. Mm -hmm. So, collected rents is what I would mm -hmm. agree to. Okay, so as a owner now, I have to think of myself. Now I got another layer of overhead here. I just yes. added 10% yeah. or maybe a little less, but to a management. Yeah. But I think if this is in Steve's world, that is totally worth it. I don't <laughs> want to be collecting, I don't want to be collecting three days late rent. I don't want to be yeah. uh, worrying about a, a toilet that's stuffed up. I mean, I, I want to be out. I want the appreciation. I love the rent. I love ownership. I just don't want to hassle. Well, it's even beyond that. You could make yourself liable. Because if you don't know the, the local property management laws and the tenant laws and landlord laws, you could get yourself in trouble. So let a property manager do that who's got an attorney on staff and they know what you can do mm -hmm. and what you can't do. And uh, I mean, I've literally seen people that didn't, that tried to manage their own properties go into the property to fix stuff without telling the tenant that you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just better to have it managed professionally. And, and there, there's such good companies out there now, oh, franchises. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, I'm buying it, and I'm sure a lot of our <laughs> consumers say, Steve, I have rentals, and yes, they're a hassle. Yeah. But now, let's say I'm going to go out for a property manager. What am I looking for in a manager? I got my price tag. Pretty much know what that number is. You yeah. just told me that. Who am I looking for? What's the, the you know, what's my checklist? Well, we have a 20-question checklist wow. that we give to our investors so that they know. But even beyond that, we have uh, vetted out mm -hmm. different property managers, and we give that list. But basically, the, the main things you want to know is how many properties do they have under management, and how much staff do they have to handle that? Mm -hmm. uh, because you, you don't want, you want at least one staff person per 100 homes, at least, mm -hmm. um, to take care of that. So if they have a thousand, you know, houses under management, they better have a, a nice staff and good systems in mm -hmm. place, software, so that 
you as the investor can go in and check at any time on how your property is doing. Uh, there, that's, that's what I mean. Everything has changed where you can log in and you get to see the communication inside that management mm -hmm. company where, you know, between maintenance and staff, they're saying, oh, yeah, this was fixed. So, so you're viewing this you're online. viewing it online live. And, and so the, I would look at that. I would uh, see how many years of experience they have. I don't want to work with anyone who's just, I don't want to be the learning. <laughs> they're learning. Uh -huh. I want to make sure they've got the experience. When I'm looking at what areas are more likely landlord friendly? Uh, you know, because, I mean, I... I want it to be, I, I, it's not in my neighborhood, so maybe I'm not, I don't care. But yeah. the landlord, maybe he cares. Let's just say that you want to stay out of the West Coast. Uh, California um, basically is tenant friendly. So uh, a California tenant has lots of rights mm -hmm. and, it, and it's hard to evict. Whereas if you go to a place like Texas, Ohio, uh, even Florida, mm -hmm. and, and you want, and if your tenant doesn't pay, they have, they get a three-day notice, mm -hmm. and then they, they're they evicted in 45 days. In Texas, the sheriff comes and takes their stuff out if they're not out. I mean, it's serious stuff, mm -hmm. and it, it may seem cold-hearted, but most landlords are not people who can cover someone else's rent. Mm -hmm. You know, that if you want to do charity, do charity, but if, if it's a business, then, mm -hmm. you know, people have to pay, and there are states who honor that. Okay, so uh, let's say I find myself a landlord-friendly area, uh, and I... And I feel comfortable with it. I'm going to outsource my management. I don't want to do any of this. I'm sending it all out. Yeah. I like the idea of being online and being able to yeah. oversee it though. Absolutely. You know, I'm still looking at the transactions, the communication between my uh, tenants and my uh, firm, yes. my management firm. I think that's great. It's wonderful. Okay. Now, you know, I, I, I'm still trying to be though a passive investor. That's my goal. <laughs> that's my goal, right. right? So when you talk about, uh, I've just given you one example, how far up the food chain is that definition of Am I a passive investor then? Because yeah. I outsourced it. I made sure it's in a friendly landlord area. All I'm doing is going online once a week or so, just scoping it out. Yeah. Okay, let's be totally honest. Uh, as a landlord, you are never going to be totally passive the way you would be in a REIT. It, that's just not mm -hmm. how it works. Uh, but I have had some people who didn't really have the choice because maybe they owned a property in San Francisco uh, they found out it was worth a million dollars, two million dollars, but they're barely getting any any return, maybe a one mm. one percent cap rate or one percent return on that property. And so we show them that they can sell that property and exchange it tax deferred for say 20 properties. And mm -hmm. they the first thing they say is I love the cash flow. Uh, it just went from negative to twenty thousand dollars a month. I'll take it. But what do I have to do? You know, and mm -hmm. they don't want they want to retire, right. you know, they don't want to be managing anything. And so because property management will do most of the work, you just have to supervise mm -hmm. your property manager. Mm -hmm. And so that might take an hour a month of just going over the, uh, the finances, going over the bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And then I would say another hour a month, just checking in on your properties. And if you're buying somewhere that's not near you, I would personally go out and, um, and either check on the property once a year or have pictures sent from the property manager. Mm -hmm. You can also have them go in and, uh, of course, it, they have to do it the right way, uh, but go in and fix certain things. Fix the filters, check mm -hmm. on the, the mm -hmm. alarm systems, and, 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 the, and then when they're in there, they can take pictures to, so that you know mm -hmm. what's going on inside your property. I have a question and I'm sure that everybody's asking right now in our audience. Hey, listen, if I have this home, can I buy one of those home warranties like I have now? I have one for my residence. Absolutely. Could I do that for this? Oh, we absolutely recommend the home warranty. Because if something goes wrong, it just it gets replaced. So. so we're going to price that into our expense load. I yeah. got my property management here. Yeah. I might have to pay another 600 or so a year to get in there. So when I know when I have a person coming from an AC problem, it's a $75 charge, done. I know what that's going to be. Absolutely. That's all I'm paying. And maybe roll the dice. Uh, if they can't fix it, they might actually replace it. That, no, that, that's exactly right. So. We, we love those home warranties. Mm -hmm. And of course, add on to that insurance. You know, we, mm -hmm. we love Jacksonville as an area because uh, of the port and um, the Panama Canal has expanded. And so larger container ships can go through and they're going to the East Coast instead of to Long Beach in California. So a lot more activity on the, on the East Coast and particularly Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So we love that market, but there was just recently uh, a hurricane as we mm -hmm. know. With the right insurance, uh, actually, not one of our thousands of investors were hurt by that, which is amazing because they were mm. inland. But uh, but if that did happen and you had the right insurance in place, then that would just be a minor detail as well. 
Well, I'm into, out after hearing you, I want to own, I just want to outsource management. Well, listen, don't forget to watch part four of our series on real estate investing, what type of income property should be considered. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or your financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh my God.